Our passage today is talking about is, is talking about um, is a really important passage. But it it's interesting. We are in some crazy times, and you don't have to look too far. And I know there are some internet um, YouTube warriors here. Put your hands up. Are you a YouTube warrior? No, come on. You don't have to go far to come to come across some crazy things on the on the internet, yeah. And uh, and there are crazy things happening in the world. But the world has always been crazy, right? Right back from when Paul was around, it was crazy then. But you know, crazy times. Paul to Timothy, he acknowledged it. But it wasn't the, the, the world around that he was talking about. He's talking about, there'll be terrible days, but this is talking about the church. In the church, there would be, people will be lovers of themselves and lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient of their parents. Now, who would expect that? We look at it in church and go, well, that's part of it, of course. You know, that's the world we live in. We expect that, even in the church. You know, um, you know, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal. Not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasures, lovers of, rather than lovers of God. And you know, uh, it, it is because the church is supposed to be different. We expect it when we look at the world around us, don't we? We expect it to be crazy out there. We expect people. When I was with police, I didn't expect those dudes to do the right thing. You know, I didn't expect somebody who was full of booze and, and drugs and stuff to do the right thing. So I just accepted it, moved, tried to help them up. You know, with, when it comes to the church, though, the church... Paul is telling Timothy that it's going to be terrible in the end, even in the church, and that is the way it's going to be. That's what he's doing. You know, um, even in the church, people are those lovers of self. Uh, then you go, well, I better work on loving myself more so I can be loving. Well, we probably need to get over ourselves a bit, me included, and realize it's not about us. It's not about us, but it's about the God. And you know, I, I, um, I look and I see this picture, you know, um, we're, we're on Paul's, uh, on, on John's theme from last week, the, the shipwreck. You know, look at that. You know, I have, I have images of people, would you like to be up on the, on the deck on the front of that ship? getting tossed around. I imagine if you were up there, you'd have to be lashed to the front, still getting tossed this way and that way, all over the place. And there, in spite of those massive seas, you'd see the captain of the ship up in the wheel tower, just guiding that sucker through. Guiding the sucker. And just guiding it through. And isn't that what we're meant to be of our lives? Up there, in spite of those that the precipice that we find ourselves on, guiding, keeping the course. Keeping the course. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, says Paul. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth derives its name. I pray that of all the glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power of his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and deep and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure, to the measure of all the fullness of God. Isn't that a great prayer? I mean, I, I um, 
You know, I love it. When was the last time you prayed that prayer for somebody? A family member, a work colleague, your neighbour, your cafe person, your, your barista? When was the last time you prayed that type of prayer? Got down on the knees and said, you know, um, and, and you know, we have a lot of prayers that we pray, don't we? I mean, we, we pray. Um, you know, maybe that, that uh, Damo gets his foot better. No, or um, maybe we pray that, you know, some of the prayers we pray, a lot about, about those things that are affecting us at the time. So we have the good life. And I was thinking when we were, we were talking about, about prayer earlier on in the, in the service, you know, there, there was that element of we want the good life. The good life. I don't hear, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. And if you're a Christian leader, if you're an elder or a ministry leader or a Sabbath school teacher or a deacon or a deaconess or, or a musician, you know, I bow before the Father on behalf of you, the people that are here, the people that we minister to as we start into 2023. That is what we're seeking to do. You know, um, you know that you would be strengthened in here on the inside, that you would be really, really strengthened here, in here in the love of Christ. That's what we want. You know, and, 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 and not only that, but that you would know how big and, and, and wide and high and deep is the love of Christ. When was the last time you did that? You know, Pastoral carers in this church. Pray for people by name. Have the individuals, the ones, the twos, that you pray for and seek God's understanding and spirit in their lives. And this, you know, it's not that we're the best teachers, best preachers, best whatever leaders. It's that you have connection with this great, great and wonderful God. That is the core thing. And that you're seeking on behalf of the people you minister to, their well-being and their, that the Spirit will move in the lives of those that we minister to. You know, and it's, you know, it's, Paul says, for this reason I get down on my knees before the Father. You know, the Father, one Father from whom everything comes. I want you to breathe in. Breathe in. <sighs> come on. One, two, three. <sighs> now, come on, do it again. All together. One, two, three. Breathe in. <sighs> That's only because of God's grace that you can do that. Do it again. God's grace again. Do it again. God's grace again. Hmm. Hmm. I bow before the Father, from whom every family, and it's a bit of a play on words here. This is, you know, every, every father from whom all fathers come. You know, so it's this play in the, in the Greek on, on father. So it's this lineage that everything comes from this all-powerful Father that we have. And he's reminding us there is one being from whom everybody comes, a Father. You know, I'm coming before the one from whom everything comes. Have you ever talked to... Anybody, um, I, I, when I was uh, serving as an officer down in, in surface, every winter 
coming into town, there would be these groups of people. It would be the sheikh from UAE. And you'd talk to these guys, and you knew that this dude was a billionaire. He was just... had lots and lots of money. You know, like you're, there were some places up in Main Beach that they, they just paid for this. Somebody stayed there for free and got paid a wage just to house it. And they would just come in, overtake it. There was one, one tower in town that, that was just... And they would just come and they'd, this, this one person would bring their household and all their, their cousins and relatives and come. But you knew when you talked to that person, they had the power to change your life and the lives of your whole community if they chose to put their money, even if you, they gave you one of their cars, one of their Maseratis or whatever they were driving around at the time, the Ferrari. You know, you knew the riches. So, and this is, you know, um, out of his... We pray that out of his glorious riches, his riches, you know, he has so much to give us. You know, Revelation 4 says this, you know, it's got this picture of God's glory. You know, that, that one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby and this rainbow of emerald that is surrounding them. And, you know, from the throne comes this rumble and lightning and thunder all over the place. And the seven spirits of God are there and also in there, you know, the throne is sitting on this sea of glass that just looks like a crystal glass that you dropped on Christmas. Crystal glass. You know, oh, what an amazing picture. This is the glory of God. The glory of God that... Pray that out of his glorious riches, in your inner being, right in here, your inner being. He's in charge of everything, every single one of us, thinking about what he is capable to do through his glorious riches in your life, in the life of your family, in the life of your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, his riches. Imagine what that would look like. You know, may he grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit. That's what he, Paul's praying for, for this church. Isn't that amazing? And I'm begging you that as we start into 2023 that we pray for the people that we love. Pray for the people that we have connection with. Pray for the people that we ad hocly join with. That God would strengthen them with power through the Spirit in the inner being. You know, this is the prayer that we need to pray for people in our communities, our partners and leaders of our church. And, you know, if you're not a leader in this church and you're... Pray for the leaders, the ones that have to make the decisions of where the church goes. You know, you know it's not about that Frank stops smoking or drinking or Tom stops looking at pornography or Francine stops reading Mills and Boone. Maybe. Or our daughter stops smoking marijuana. Or that my daughter will not be so promiscuous. But in her faith, that she will say, God, I need you. You have all the power. I want this person, I want Dave to be strengthened with power through your spirit to where it gets into his inner being. And that was the promise of the Old Testament. You know, oh, right, Old Testament? Where is it? Hmm. Ah, no, we're not going to go there. But um, in, in, um, in Ezekiel 36, there is this picture where, 
where, you know, we have, um, have Ezekiel and, he, and God speaks through him. And he says, I will sprinkle, and he's speaking to the people of Israel. And he says, I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be clean and I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you, and hear this, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Yeah? Who's the one that does that? Is that you pulling yourself up by your bootstraps? With all your struggles, with all your, your, your leanings? This isn't about you. This isn't about me. This is about a gift to the Spirit where he says, I will remove your heart. That heart of stone that can't beat. And I'll give you one that beats. I'll put in you my Spirit and move you to follow my decrees. And be careful about my laws. Wow. That's different to the prayer that we sometimes pray, isn't it? When we put our loved ones, our church, our nation leaders in the hands of this God. This God. And ask that through the power of his spirit in their inner being that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, and I pray that being rooted and established in love. Now, this is an agricultural rooted. Have you ever, you've planted, I've got this um, butcher bird in the backyard. Anybody love butcher birds? Yeah, yeah, butcher birds, lovely, lovely bird. Yeah, it's sort of a bit, bit rugged if you're a, a, a magpie, but urban urban scourge at the moment, but they, they come in and he goes to the tomato patches around the property. You're like a, the, I've got a, um, just a, a pot with a tomato plant in. But now I've got tomatoes all over the backyard, just coming up there all over the place. Well, some of the seed he puts into, we've got rocks in some, you know, like pebbles, large pebbles like that, and he'll drop it in, and you'll see this, this plant spring up. Well, as soon as the sun comes out after a couple of days, that sucker has just died, because it's got no roots. It's got nothing to put in there. It's going into road base at the bottom of it, and it's, it's got nothing. But it grew for a little bit. Rooted deep down. He's praying that, Paul is praying that deep down, it's rooted you know, that um, in, in Christ's love, established in this love of Christ, which is so, so vast just for you, for me. Rooted in this love of Christ. Hmm. May have the power together with all of the saints, all of the saints of history, you know, all of the saints of history. You know, the people that they can put on the line. You know, that it doesn't matter whether they're getting burnt at the stake, they're getting stoned, they're, they're you know, like, they're, they're just suffering, they're getting imprisoned. Those saints of history that weathered and knew the Spirit's work in their life, that their standing before God and their blessing of God wasn't based on the blessing that they saw in their own life. It wasn't based on their circumstances, but it was based on this great God and that constancy of God in who was amazing. You know, may have power together with all of the saints to grasp how wide and deep and long is the love of Christ. And to know that this love, that surpasses knowledge. Now, isn't that a strange... Is it, do you find that strange? Surpasses knowledge. I think this is talking about... I can stand up here all day 
get you into the Greek, get you into the Hebrew, get you into, into all the things that, you know, you can learn Aramaic, you can get a, a, maybe a, a, a master's or a doctorate in theology. But it surpasses that. A love that surpasses knowledge because it's got to be where it affects your inner being, your heart. You know, it's not just about coming to these gatherings. That's not church. Church is about being in the power of the Spirit and love and, 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 and you know, knowing how wide and, and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And it, that surpasses all knowledge. doesn't mean to say we don't have to have knowledge. Uh, you know, as an Adventist, I mean, really, we probably go the other way a little bit more on the, on the knowledge side. I think sometimes a lot too far. But that's, that is important. You, know, you, you need knowledge as well as, as you know, like our, our, our decisions and our, our faith needs to be established on good principle. But the picture that we paint of the church to a world when we are stale and we are stagnant and we are not the people that we are called to be is not a good one. And I pray for you that at the start of 23 that you will know how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And that that knowledge will get deep down inside you and cause you to hear and feel the dance of the Spirit in your life as you go forward. You know, that you may be filled... To the measure, you know, they used to have these measure of grains, so they, they would be able to tell exactly, if you got a bad measure, you got a bad deal. If you got a too full measure, you, you, you probably wouldn't fit it in the bag that you needed. The full measure, that full measure of all the faithfulness of God to you, that is what I want for you as a, as a pastor. You know, could you leave Jesus? You can leave church. You know, we, we, we create these, these avenues, these places, these havens where people don't need to have a relationship because we put all the boundaries around them and make the decisions for them. That's why, you know, you guys that are going off to university, your 18, 19-year-olds that are, are leaving the haven of BAC or, or home, you need... It's a danger zone for you if you haven't made a decision for yourself. You need this, that, that spirit to be working deep inside you to allow you to be changed and full of the spirit, full of his love, full of his grace, full of, to the full measure, the full measure of all that power of his glorious riches. I don't know what that looks like for you as we go into 2023, hey? But I do know it's an exciting journey. And I want to do that with you. And, we, and the leaders of this church. You know, 2023. Hmm. Bit late. Bit late down this end. But as, as a nation, we're going to start with a bang. You're right. You're right. You know, we want to be known as a church that is full of the Spirit, do we not? That's what I want. My passion for you is that your families are changed, your relationships are changed, your, your, your prayers for your children are changed. That this becomes your prayer. that they will be filled, not just about the presenting issues, they, they're important, but the core issue is that they be connected to the one who can change them, that those dry bones come alive. You know, that's, that's Ezekiel 37, the very next chapter after what we just read. 
Dry bones come along, that doesn't happen by itself. You ever tried to stand up a bunch of bones? It doesn't happen. Seen it in a, in a lab somewhere, but it, didn't, it, had, it had a stick up the back and, and it had to be held up. Is that what we want our church to be? No, we want it to be alive, full of flesh and a, pl- a heart that's beating full of the Spirit. Yeah? Who wants that? Do you want that? Let's stand. Stand if you want that in your life. You young guys, as you go into school this year, that's you, full of life, full of the Spirit. You know, this isn't about an old person thing. This is about young people coming alive and following the dance of the Spirit, being changed from the inside out. This is about older people pouring back into those generations that are going into school. This is about parents pouring and praying over their families. Let's pray. Father God, We are so thankful that you offer the fullness of your spirit. You are so gracious, God, that you supply our needs. And Lord, I get down on my knees for this church that your spirit may pour out through the riches of your glory that they will know how deep and wide and how long Your love is for them, that your spirit may dwell richly and all the fullness of your spirit, that we won't be like the seeds that fall on the stony ground, that we will be ones that are rooted in your love, please God. Create in us that faith. You've said that even if we have a seed of, you know, like a mustard seed, a very small thing, you will create the faith that we can rely on you. Lord, come and dwell. This is the prayer of our hearts today, and I pray that you will help us to live in your spirit, come what may, in this changing time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.